Hi everyone, Rick with Rick's 135 Scale Models with another little project. So what I did is I got a hold of this Tamiya M113, which is in the Desert Storm version. And I got it off eBay, uh, got a good price on it. It was supposed to become fully contained, still in the packaging, and that wasn't quite right. Um, I was hoping to get all of these different bags and pieces of equipment to uh, kind of tweak and use for other purposes. And then take the M113 and make it into a uh, German version. But what I got was the basic M113 Desert Storm version without all the equipment, which is what I was looking forward to. But I did get one of the Edward uh, PE sheets with a bunch of metal PE parts in it. So, got a good price for it. Oh well, uh, buyer beware, but I'm gonna make the best of it. So, took, built the model in a Bundeswehr version. And uh, what I'm going to do next is go about weathering and detailing it. Uh, what I'm looking to do is take this, which I added the uh, poles mounting uh, device here that holds a bunch of poles for camouflage netting and that. I added those parts, you kind of cannibalize some of the different parts off the PE that look similar for the bracketing. Um, added the antennas doing the uh, guitar string style. And in a prior video you may have seen I made metal guardrails like the uh, Germans do for the headlights. Now they don't use the standard headlight, they use a different one, which is their one you see on all the Leopards and all those vehicles. So I happen to have a uh, Ming Leopard A7 Plus that I haven't built yet, but on that kit they don't use the standard headlights. So I cannibalized the headlights out of that part and uh, put them on the model. And then I got a Mr. Model Bow front basket in resin that I attached to the front. Um, added the decals, the kit doesn't come with a decal, so I had some extra decals, and uh, basically did that. Now I've ordered and have not received yet a, a German style MG machine gun mount that goes here, that's coming from Germany from Mr. Modelbau, they have one that looks pretty sharp that I'm waiting to receive. Uh, once I get that, I'm going to uh, install that, and then uh, tomorrow morning I have to run over to a uh, local hobby shop and get the uh, parts to do this uh, part here. Um, but I've got the vehicle painted, detailed, I did some modifications because the uh, tail lights are different. They're actually wider on the German one, but uh, this is close enough for uh, just a simple model kit. And I had one of the extra follow me uh, placards for convoy, added that there, added uh, some parts here to put the reflectors they had there. Um, the newest version of the M113 that the Germans were using up until late had some notches cut out right here. Um, I thought about cutting them, but just didn't really feel uh, like that was going to work out real well for me right now. So I didn't. I may come back and do it later. I'm not sure yet. But I did do the camouflaging in the uh, European style that the Bundeswehr uses. And like I said, added the antennas and all those parts. Uh, once again, did some modifications to do the different headlight system. And then Scratch built the smoke discharge that the Germans use here on the front. So what I'm going to do is take the model and weather it. Now I'm not looking for a grubby, horribly dirty look. I'm just wanting to accent it. And so what I'm going to do is do some streaking uh, with enamels and uh, some light weathering, a little bit of fading. Now this is an aluminum vehicle. Therefore, you can't put rust on it because aluminum doesn't rust. Um, you might see some uh, flaking here and there, but every one of these things I've ever seen, the paint sticks pretty good to it. Um, so, it'll, like I said, mainly just be oxidation effects, weathering, some rain streaking, um, maybe a little bit of dust on the top, and uh, adding some soot from the exhaust system, etc. Uh, so, let's get started. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take enamels and put small dots of paint in different places. And then I'm going to use thinner and then lightly pull it down in a technique to kind of spread it and smear it to create a uh, water stain look. So let me start that process. 
So initially I'll take my different colors, these are uh, different shades of enamel, and I'm going to, like I said, put some light drops. The idea is to then uh, smear it. Now some people can use uh, more of a gel type enamel or different things. Uh, I'm going to use this. Now the idea, some of these colors won't necessarily show up very well on the colors, but in the end it'll create that stain look that I'm looking for. Now the lighter colors are great for the uh, more of that water stain look you're going to see. And you're going to want to kind of like I said create this look. Then I will take a wider brush, put a little bit of enamel on, and then I'm going to kind of pull it down and spread it so that you get that water streak look. I kind of showed this technique in other videos, but it is by far one of, I think, the neatest effects if you do it right. Once it's, when it's wet, it doesn't necessarily show as much, but as it dries, it really does uh, bring it out. And if you look at, uh, in the wintertime especially, you know, different vehicles on the side of the road or uh, parked, and that you'll see kind of this water stained look. Now, what I will do is put a little bit of paint on and just kind of because I really want to accentuate the uh, lighter color because it really does kind of create that look I'm uh, looking for. And then, once again, just lightly pull it down. Now you're kind of seeing it uh, spread out on this edge here. I don't mind that effect. It kind of actually will uh, show off different components. The nice thing about the enamel is if you end up like there, I've got a little bit too much. So what you can do is you just make sure you clean the brush really good. Get some more enamel on it and just spread it out. like that and then you can uh, create that faded look now by doing this like this you're creating the kind of that white oxidation look which is what I'm looking for and what you'll notice on some of these colors especially like the black you'll see kind of an oxidation around the perimeter a little more so by just kind of dabbing lightly, I'm kind of doing that subtly. It's it's not really obvious, but as it cures, it'll start to come out a little bit. So you kind of see right there, you can kind of see some of the streaking in that. That's what I'm looking for there. And then I'll repeat it on this side. Once again, just kind of go around and put uh, the different colors I'm looking for. One of the things you can do is like the uh, emblems and that, you want to kind of utilize that. Sometimes it'll uh, bring out your uh, colors and the effects you're getting. And this is one of those effects. Do it a little bit. If you want more, come back and uh, kind of update it a little bit, but don't overdo it initially. I, I mean, I keep saying less is best on this. Once again, put a little bit of enamel on, thinner, and then just go about. Now, 
if you end up taking too long and the enamel starts to dry, you just kind of have to sit and brush it a little bit and it'll, uh, the thinner will uh, soften it up. And then you can uh, pull it down. Now, if you're trying to do an effect of, of vehicle driving and the, and the swirl effect, what you can do is kind of take and flick it and uh, create the uh, swirl look from uh, water coming up from like tires, for example, or even from the tracks. Uh, that effect, uh, it's just a matter of practicing the technique. What's nice about this is it's a big wide surface, so it'll really show the effect once it cures, and it'll give it kind of that a little bit of oxidized or road dust and that. And I put a little bit more on here and I'm just gonna kinda go around the sides. And then make sure I clean it off real good. And then uh, lightly dampen the brush. Most of this is going to get spread out and wiped away, but the effect will still occur. Like I said, if you get a little bit too much of the color, just uh, clean the brush real good. Come back with more enamel and just, in essence, wipe it off. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is create kind of a uh, wash for the tops. Now I'm going to take the same enamel, put a little bit of the paint, or the enamel thinner, put a little bit in there and kind of create kind of a color. I want that a hint darker, so I'll put a little bit of the darker in. Got my garage doors closing behind me. And then I'm going to take and then just touch a little bit in these different areas. The enamel will spread out and highlight different details. Now the more you thin it, the less color you'll see. But uh, it's one of those you can come back and repeat it and add more. And it's another one of those, you know, do a little bit of first, see if it gives you the coloring you're looking for, and you can always come back and add to it. But it's a lot harder to undo what you already did. I'm going to continue working my way around this and uh, show you the final results of this stage in a few minutes. So, I finished the enamel work. Um, you can kind of see the striations here kind of running down the side of the vehicle. That just gives the oxidation uh, and uh, weathering look I was looking for. Nothing too aggressive, but just uh, just kind of a weathered look. Um, with normal you'd see from vehicles being parked outside and uh, the sun effects and that and then a little bit of rain next I'm going to take some chalk and then lightly highlight some of this and then from there I'm going to finish off with a uh, clear flat I'll be using this to me acrylic and then we'll have the final reveal so let's get started initially I'm going to take a couple different shades of chalk and kind of lightly scrape it into uh, my little cup, maybe like this, and then I'll take the powder, and then from there I'll be able to uh, use a Q-tip and a paintbrush 
to kind of blend it onto the vehicle. <clears throat> now there's different ways you can do this. You can take and just rub it on like I'm doing, or you can actually take a little bit of enamel, put it on the uh, your whatever applicator you're using and use that to apply it uh, a little thicker and then stick a little better. I'm just looking for, like I said, a real light effect, nothing really major. Just kind of the road grind build that you would see kind of on the lower portions of the vehicle. This is another one of those processes where I always kind of say, you know, start light and then uh, wait for the finished effect and you can always add more. <clears throat> Now, when vehicles are going down the road, just remember, the water will kind of spray upward <clears throat> with wheels especially. The tracks will get a little bit of that whipping effect, but it usually is in the lower portion of the vehicle or if it's following. Sometimes you'll have from the front of this vehicle, if it's close to the vehicle behind it, it's uh, kicking stuff up in the air. Um, so when you're doing this, you know, kind of think about those effects too. The other nice thing about using the chalk is it also has kind of a dulling effect, which is uh, another look that I try and accomplish. So just give it a nice, you know, coating down the lower parts, making sure to, uh, you know, look at everything that's going to be down getting grubbied up and then just work on that. Now the nice thing at this stage also is if you get a little bit too much on like that will what you can do is do like a little bit of compressed air and just lightly kind of blow it out a little bit. It'll kind of clean it up <clears throat> if you did too much. If you want to keep it, just leave it there and then when you seal it, it'll uh, lock it all down. Now, if you use a lighter dusting for lighter dirt, I'm looking for more of the grimy, oily kind of grime you'd get in the winter. So, that's the side. <clears throat> I'm going to make sure we do the front end. Just working on this. Now, play with the chalk if you're using it lightly at first. Kind of, you'll kind of get a feel for what you're doing and then you can hit it harder. Because sometimes if you hit it too hard, uh, you'll be fighting it the rest of the time. Okay. Now we're going to hit this side. Then the back. Now the other thing that I always caution about using chalk, if you leave a fingerprint and use chalk, anybody who knows anything about fingerprints will know you are creating a point at which the chalk is going to stick more and you will leave your fingerprint on your model. And unless you're uh, wanting to mark it with your physical marker, Wear gloves or don't chalk anywhere you've touched. Um, if you're going to use chalk and you've touched it a bunch, you can wash it, depending on the paint you used and the curing and if your decals are done. Um, but generally, until you get the hang of it, and depending on your technique, just wear gloves. It, it works out much better. Okay, now I will take just a little of a lighter color just for a highlight effect. 
Uh, actually, I think that this color will be a little more along the lines of what I'm looking for. Now, I know it's chalk. I, I uh, It's Mr. Hobby, but the rest of it, I have no idea what it says. And this color I'm using is sand. Now, this is a newer thing I just got. I'm really happy with it. It works out really nice. It's also one of those... Um, if you want to do the technique like I was talking about to put like a little bit of mud or something, um, you just take your brush and lightly dip it in some enamel, dab most of that off, and then when you touch this, it, it kind of liquefies it just a little bit, and then you'll uh, get the ability to kind of lay it in. Now, this, I'm just looking for a light highlighting. I'm not, I don't want to do a lot of this. Just a lower area and just like I said just kind of giving it a little little extra coloring Now, if you're, if you're looking for a lot heavier chalking, you have to use a different applicator, more like along the lines of a Q-tip or something to really grind it in. The paintbrush, you're not going to be able to get enough pressure, but for doing this blending like I'm doing, this seems to work a little better for me. Okay, so that's that. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is sealing it, and then once it's cured, I'll do the final reveal. Okay, so here's going to be the completed vehicle. Now, the only thing I haven't done yet is I haven't received my MG machine gun mount that'll be put up here. I should be here in the next week or two, but uh, coming from Germany, uh, depends on how long customs takes. Um, but I have completed the rest of the vehicle. Once that arrives, I'll complete that. But I wanted to show what I've done. So after sealing all the chalk in, you kind of see the effect you get. Nothing really major, just a little bit of a highlight, the road dusty look. A little bit of dust in the uh, tires to kind of accentuate the uh, different details in there. I also added a uh, the writing up here, which was done with chalk crayon. Um, I actually did that with uh, this pen, which is a... Uh, chalk crayon ironically it's made in germany um but i got it at the local hobby shop and um what that does is it just marks it for uh, probably a road march or something so they know um different things i'm not 100 percent sure but i see lots of videos and that of uh, the Bundeswehr moving uh, different exercises and they always have riding on so i've simulated that here um you can see the uh the different uh, road wear chalk and all that uh the striations which I already talked about and just the overall uh, kind of grubby it up it's uh, not real bad it hasn't been out in the mud a lot but it definitely is and uh, got some wear and tear and rut dirt going on um, but this uh, is a nice little ex accent once I get the MG I'll add that in I'm gonna probably put in some uh, equipment in the front uh, camouflage netting rolled up or something along those lines but that'll be it for another video down the road anyway that's my completed video done with some uh, basic enamels uh, light colors blending it down with uh, clean uh, enamel thinner and uh, kind of brushing it downward to kind of create the uh, water striation look adding uh, some other types of products just like touch-ups here and there some of the uh, weathering enamels to just do the uh, a little bit of a wash and then followed it up after it was all dried with some different chalk products uh, just your basic uh, chalks just to kind of highlight uh, the dusty look and then finished it off with the uh, clear flat enamel I used, um, I'm sorry, not enamel, but acrylic. Um, I used this Tamiya product, which I've been real happy with. It seems to get the least of a uh, trans transfer of color where uh, some of the other products will make it look a little white. This doesn't do that very much, so I'm very happy with it. Um, but that's the model. That's the product. 
And uh, there you go. Any questions, comments, please reach out and ask me. Please like the video. Please subscribe. Take care, everyone, and see you on the next one. Bye-bye.